And we're pleased to say that Jamie and Paul join us now. Um, she was an incredible woman, wasn't she? I mean, I just watched the movie yesterday. Um, a friend of yours. So for you to, to, to make this and be part of it, how did you feel when you were first approached to say that this was going to be made? I think we were all... Uh, everyone who knew Marie was a little bit cautious about right. films and that. Just naturally protective of someone's, someone's legacy. Yeah. And, you know, it was... Matt Hyman approached me first. He called me and he said, I've just read your book. I've just watched Cartel Land. He said, come and have a meet. Yeah. Um, and it was great that they got a documentary director and that gave me a lot of confidence, you know, right. a good documentary director whose heart was really in it. Mm. And then I met Roz and, you know, her, her commitment... Rosman Pike who's playing her. Yeah, yeah. Rosman Pike. You know, they, they did say initially I sat at a table in the front line club over a few beers and he said, this is going to be Marie. And I turned around, there's statuesque Roz. <laughs> but, no, I mean, she, she really... <coughs> well, she that changed the moment uh, Rosman walked out of the trailer. Um, yeah. uh, when you started filming, she came out and you said that was spooky. Yeah, it, it was. I'd met her about six months before, so a long time had passed. And this trailer opened, and and Rosman walked out, and I mean, the hairs on the back of my neck and arms stood up. I was like, mm. wow. But it wasn't just the makeup and and that. It was the way she held herself, the way she walked, the way she lit a cigarette. You know, she'd just gone so deep into it that. And and then they did some dialogue. I had a set of cans on. And the voice. And she spoke, and it was like. Poof. Yeah. At first, I thought she was lip syncing. Yeah. You know, they'd done something, and then she carried on talking, like, and it was just like, wow. I know, it was an incredible performance. And for you, Jamie, you've got him next to you throughout yeah. the whole thing. So, <laughs> you know, it's, you, it, it, I mean, that's brilliant in one way, because mm. you've got this source of information, but the pressure also, I guess. Yeah, he's still next to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, been next to him ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've left my side. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's... Um, <laughs> That's invaluable as an actor, really, to have the person you're portraying there at all times. Um, but it, uh, as you said, it does um, uh, bring an extra element of pressure and it, it, it can be daunting. But very quickly, that was dispersed because Paul is, um, was so supportive uh, from the very you know, first take we did. I mean, actually, the very first take I did yeah. say... I didn't want you anywhere near me. <laughs> Which I completely got. I mean, imagine that you're, you're yeah. doing okay. this profession and art and I'm still going, really? You know, that yeah. would have been a bit... Also, so much going on on the first day of set anyway. Everyone's terrified mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in, a, in the right sense. And then to have the person you're portraying listening, the accent, everything. So, but it was only one day. Yeah, you didn't, and, I, and then you were in. I think it just blended in then. Yeah. We so did it help from... you then, I assume, having the man that was there? Yeah. Uh, he, you would be able to say, right, OK, what were you feeling at this moment? Totally. And there are the most poignant, heartbreaking, disturbing moments in the movie. Sure. What did you feel at that Exactly. Time? I mean, for, for, for Roz and I, not, not over-glamorise them or Hollywoodize them or anything mm. and just try to show them in their more, most realistic sense, and that's why Matt Heinemann, our director, is an <laughs> unbelievable documentary filmmaker. It's his first narrative film, but he was all about realism and trying to make this, um, you know, um, resonate as much as it did with these people at the time, and the only person who knew what that was yeah. was Paul. Well, describe her. I mean, she, she, what was she like to you? Because I know that Jamie wanted to get on board because the, the, your friendship was, is the core of the, of the film. What was she like from, from, from us uh, with the movie? This is a woman who w had a laser-like pursuit of the truth. Absolutely. I mean, I often describe working with her. Um, it was like peeling back skins off an onion. When we are into a story, she would do one interview, meet some people, and they would say, well, this happened, and they'd say, OK, we go there. And then you would just go further and further. Where a lot of journalists, not wrongly, would stop and say, we have the facts here. She would always want to go further and further, you know, and, and, and often that took you into unknown territory. But also, what, an, what a privilege and what a great way to work. At a price, really, because you, you look at um, the, the struggle of, of her mind to deal with what she'd seen and witnessed. And, and you too. And I just wonder, going back and filming those scenes and having to see it all again, is that, was that not really tough for you? It, it was tough, but not, I think people are naturally a bit worried about when we were recreating scenes that, you know, yeah. Jamie was very aware. On the last scene we did where Marie was killed, yeah. Jamie just came and said, you do not need to be here, which was really a nice thing. And I just went and sat away from it yeah. where Marie was in the rubble. But certainly when I, when I saw the scenes in the media centre being recreated, and that, it made me look at it and, you know, kind of probably differently than everyone else on set. Right. But it just made me realise what I missed. You know, I missed Marie, I missed yeah, what we did. So it was very poignant on that front. Um, 
But ja it... Jamie, you're 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 not a, a war journalist. Um, no, and, not uh, yet. And, no. and so there were moments in uh, in this film where real people have been mm -hmm. have been used, where yep. you have a real a real father sobbing over the death of his real son. Yeah. Um, nothing can prepare you for that, really. You know, um, uh, it's it's it's. We knew from the offset that we were going to try to make this as authentic as possible, and and we knew that Matt Heinemann wanted to do that. And um, for a lot of the times in the film where we're depicting, uh, you know, whether it be Syria, Iraq, or Afghanistan, we're using real refugees from those places who have all found themselves in Jordan, where we shot all of the war stuff was in Jordan. So there's a scene where we go to a widow's basement in Homs in, in Syria, um, and uh, we're talking to, to, to women whose husbands have gone out for the day and not come back. And uh, they were real Syrian refugees who were telling their real stories, mm. and none of it was scripted. And Roz and I were just sort of reacting in the moment and crying. I mean, I have to, it was the most cathartic, emotional job I potentially will ever do. I was in bits, particularly by the end. Like, we yeah, all yeah. were, like, it was very, it was tough. And I guess it brings those stories once again to a, a whole new audience. I mean, people would have known those stories anyway, but once again, it's, it's there, it's documented for people to know of the horror that, that still continues. Well, that's the thing. It's still, you know, since Marie died in 2012, over half a million civilians have been killed yeah. in Syria, and it's almost people sort of get numb to it now, and we, sort of, we get sort of bored of hearing about Syria, and hopefully our movie can, you know... I think it will get it get it to an audience that wouldn't go and see a documentary or read a book. You know, it's um, wider. The, 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 you could see you can see the effect that nobody should witness what you guys witnessed. Nobody, obviously, and the people who are directly involved, no human being should ever go through that. It does have a profound effect on your head. It had a profound effect on her. She got home. She was lost in PTSD. Um, she was a chain smoker. I think this film breaks the record for the amount of cigarettes <laughs> smoked in the movie. It's probably still under, does it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, and you, you saw the loss of your friend in a huge explosion. You were gravely injured in that. How are you? Has it had an effect, a lasting effect on you? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it inevitably, it has, but the, the way I've, I hope I've dealt with it is when I came out of Syria, it was about another six days before I escaped, and I was in straight into hospital, a lot of operation, but I just thought the story needs telling now, so I never, I felt that that assignment never ended. I came out, I opened the doors in the hospital to the press, shouted as loud as I could, and I've just used it to keep telling Marie's story, Remy who was killed, and the people of Baba Amra. Mm -hmm. That story, you know, no one thought seven years down the line we'd still be talking about it as a current affair. What would she make of all of this, do you think? Um, I think, you know, publicly, she'd be kind of modest about the film, but in private, she'd be buzzing. You know, <laughs> she, she really would. Mm. Um, you know, but for the fact that, you know, the story was being told, you know, she, she was dedicated to it, and mm. she, she would just think, you know, these, what Matt and Roz and Jamie have done mm. is such justice to Marie and to the story and to journalism. That she'd be proud of it. Yeah. She'd be extremely proud. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Thanks for see you. So it's a private war. It's out on the 15th of, uh, of February.